I'd say a lot of our songs are relationship oriented, and not just because everybody can identify with it either. It's just about being honest. Yeah, I don't think relationship songs should include shouting click click boom at a woman and calling her your disease. Two thousand one was an intense year for rock, with so many bands becoming big names quickly, thanks in part to MTV, VH1, Much Music, and the rise of home internet. But for every band to make it big, there was a band that rode off the coattails of a specific fad and milked it for everything it's worth. I asked my patrons for suggestions on this episode of Regretting the Past, and after receiving dozens, I narrowed the choices down to three. I then let my patrons decide on which one to do an RTP on, and a band named after a spit just beat out a band with the word stank in the title. That's right. People dislike spit more than stank. I'm a grown man. Saliva, a Memphis-based rock band formed in the mid-90s in the post-rock subgenre with a bit of new metal in the vocals. On paper, it's somewhat difficult to describe the band's style and how they sound. Normally, it's easier to just say one of their most well-known songs and you get the reaction of, oh yeah, them. Saliva's big break came with their second album, Every Six Seconds, which was also the band's major label debut through Island Records. If ever there was an example of a band making it big at the right time, with their sound fitting perfectly with what already was successful with post-grunge and new metal, it's Saliva, and Every Six Seconds made them a big deal. This was an album my friend had back in 8th or 9th grade, and I went over to his place one weekend to play Tony Hawk Pro Skater, and we listened to this album. And it was about five or six songs in where we both realized this really isn't that good. And when you can't keep the attention of kids who are wanting to listen to your music, that's a problem. Every Six Seconds had music played from it for years following its release. Featured in countless commercials, movies, video game soundtracks, it was a part of pop culture. Even non-rock fans knew about Saliva. I know a lot of people ask for more comparisons on how successful albums on Regretting the Past are. Well, this one's a bit more specific. Every Six Seconds from Saliva sold just as many copies in the United States as the debut album from The Strokes, Is This It? And what's interesting about that is that both of these albums came out in the same year and had the same amount of singles. They literally had equal amounts of success, except one was really good and the other was a big pile of spit. Every Six Seconds was named after the notion that on average, every six seconds a man thinks about sex. That's it. That's the inspiration. Match that with a quote saying these songs were about relationships and you'd think you'd be in for a glorified hair metal opera all about swooning and passion. Instead, it's a whole lot of bragging, whining, and occasional complaining about love. As we go track by track, we are going to look at this time capsule of an album. One that was very much of its time period in the early 2000s. While trying to figure out why an album like this from a band named after Loogies became so popular. My patrons voted, and now it's time to look at why every six seconds is worth regretting. I hope you're ready for a lot of spit puns, because they're coming. It's a song about feeding your ego and becoming famous, including getting drunk and high and soaking it in, all because it's part of being a superstar. When you break down some of the lyrics, it talks about the peril of going into pills and dying and doing what it takes to become famous. That would be okay, but the band is delivering it as it's okay to do anything necessary to become famous. To the point where it sounds like a pro addiction and death type anthem. I didn't know that was possible. All joking aside about the subject matter, the music is the most generic, stock, hard rock, chug-along riffage imaginable. I mean, if you strip out the vocals, this would sound like royalty-free tracks on Sound Labs or even YouTube's library. Bass and drums are the same notes, over and over. Josie Scott is putting in effort, but it's mixed terribly and his volume is all over. The song is filler, and it's the opening track. That does not mean this song wasn't successful though. Oh no, this song got attention. It was featured in several video games in the early 2000s as well as movie soundtracks and performed live at WrestleMania. Make me a superstar! I get that the WWE was big on calling them all superstars instead of pro wrestlers, but is this really the song you wanted to highlight? 
as your superstars, especially considering how some pro wrestlers go out? Ugh. The music's bad, the lyrics are confusing, and it just makes you realize what you're ready for when you start every six seconds. Again though, Superstar got attention and it was not even a single. Saliva had much more success than people realize. Not bad for the most generic music ever by a band named after a bodily fluid. What a thing to be known by, too. I want my band to be named after something everyone's familiar with. Loogies. Musta been wrong. Did you have to spell it that way? I know, that's very nitpicky. But did you have to spell it like a nine-year-old girl? Come on, man. It's clear you didn't care before you made the song, though, so why does it matter how you spelt it? All right, on to the music. After you hear every six seconds a few times, and especially in songs like this, it comes in clear that this album is mixed and produced horribly. Everything sounds like it was recorded on bad equipment in a makeshift studio. And by that I mean it sounds like Saliva recorded it in a basement with bad acoustics. A saliva basement. A saliva basement. A spit basement. Ew. You'll hear other music reviewers like the guys in the Rock Coliseum and others on YouTube talk about mixing and production being an issue. The best example being when instruments and vocals don't come in clear, all the sounds have static and wash into each other, and at times it sounds like the music is being played out of a blown speaker. No matter how good of headphones or speakers you have. Hearing the whiny shouts of come on and him repeating the song title really gets old fast. The guitar solo isn't terrible but it doesn't really add anything and then Scott's vocals come in and drone on and on. He just holds a flat note and groans for 30 seconds straight. It sounds like spit. And speaking of bad audio, poor mixing and sounding like spit. This song was huge, featured in several movie soundtracks and video games, Click Click Boom took off as the second single from the album and the chorus, or rather the three words from the chorus, became instantly memorable for better or worse. Saliva became a household name because of this song, and I'm not sure if that's a good thing. Fun fact, this track, Click Click Boom, took six people to write. How? Ugh, you kids failed this group project assignment. Jeez. When I talk about how Saliva was in a gray area between post-grunge and new metal, Click Click Boom is the reason why. The shouting and the forced rapping noticed I said forced, along with low riffs just defines music in the early 2000s. The music is basic, but it's not terrible. There are guitar effects and the rhythm for the delivery is present, but then you break down the lyric writing and that's where it all falls apart. It's a song about a man reflecting back on growing up a loner and listening to music, while then randomly shouting click click boom, repeatedly, all leading up to screaming inside my head at the end. These are the ramblings of a crazy person. Be honest, if you heard a man go click click boom really loud, mid-conversation while talking about anything else, you'd be terrified. I'm really looking forward to our future. I see a lot of great things for click click boom us as we move on. Also, the lyrics are totally hypocritical. Half the song is whining about what is wrong with the man, but then he goes on about how you hear no crying and whining from him. Yes you do, that's most of the song! It's either a poorly written emo song to hard rock riffs, or it's flexing about how successful your music is, or it's making gun noises. This took six people to write, I still can't get over that. When people talk about dated music, this is such a good example of a song that has shown its age. It's grade C new metal-esque music from an era that was churning out much better music at the time. Back when the kids were downing Code Red and blasting Papa Roach, this spitty band came along and tried to cash in on it all. They were successful and this song was a big reason why. I'm surprised Click Click Boom isn't more of a meme today. I mean, come on, we did it for a Smash Mouth's All-Star, we could do it for Click Click Boom. Like, we could just add it to the end of some random sentence or story, like some new metal mic drop. In fact, I'm just gonna start adding Click Click Boom randomly at the end of sentences in this video, just because of that.
Your Disease was the track that put Saliva on the map originally. This track was the first single from every six seconds and ranked decently on several Billboard charts. While Click Click Boom was by far the most well-known song from Saliva, Your Disease was what catapulted the band into the spotlight. If there was ever a successful single that embodies the idea of regretting the past, it's Your Disease by Saliva. What were we thinking to get this song the light of day? Every single complaint I've made about the recording and levels, along with the bad singing and writing with generic music, is amplified exponentially in your disease. It is not the worst song ever, or even the worst of that generation of music, but wow, is it more proof that the early 2000s pushed out a lot of junk. Josie Scott singing or shouting or whatever you want to call it is grating in every sense, and you have to suffer through 30 seconds of garbage to get 15 seconds of something salvageable. You know something's awful when the best compliment I can give is, eh, some of it's salvageable. Dumb spit. According to Scott, your disease is about a relationship gone wrong and how things can go bad real fast when there's manipulation and sex involved. Calling a woman a disease, huh? <laughs> I mean, yeah, that sounds pretty rough. When you break down the lyrics though, half of it's talking about his lady friend, the disease, and the other half is just a hype up song about how great this man is. And it's written hilariously bad. I can't list all the lyrics here, but it's worth looking up just to read some of this hot garbage. The rhymes are terrible, the vocals are harsh, the music's bad, the mixing's rough, but people couldn't get enough, and they had it in tons of video game soundtracks. A low bar in the early 2000s, yes. The final of the three master piece of spit singles from every six seconds. After Me definitely didn't have the charting or commercial success that Click Click Boom or Your Disease had, but it did get a spot up radio play in the US because people just couldn't get enough of this goodness. Why I'm shocked that this is a single is because it's one of the most repetitive songs I've ever heard as a radio single. These are the lyrics. One verse, one chorus. That's it. It just loops like some sad post-grunge Groundhog Day. The guitar riffs are a little better and the delivery is a little cleaner, but I guess it's easier to make something sound nicer when you only have six lines worth of lyrics. If it sounds like I'm selling After Me short, I'm not. Everything I just said is all you need to know. Six lines repeated on a loop like a broken record. Ugh, and it's whiny too. Eat your heart out, Simple Plan. This band can do it with only six lines. It wouldn't bother me so bad, but the rhythm and sound of this song is much better than the previous singles, but they had to screw it up by using less lines than a greeting card. Again though, this is one of the good songs on every six seconds. This is top shelf saliva. That's the equivalent of keeping your spit jar on the top shelf by your nice booze. I know that sounds gross, but so is saliva. I'm gonna start blasting through some of these because there aren't any more singles from this album and I'm not kidding you when I say the good part of the album is already behind us. Just so you're aware, it sucks when I have to listen to an album over and over again and then you get to the halfway point knowing it does not get any better. Greater than, less than, on the music side has a very stock rhythm section that is something that could easily be programmed on Pro Tools. There is no emotion or personality at all. There's a rough guitar solo that's reminiscent of when you see a fake band on TV pretend to do an awesome solo. As for the vocals, it's a lot of yeah yeah yeahs and moaning and odd wailing of the lyrics. It's strange to say the least. It totally sounds like a different band made this song than a band that made Click Click Boom, that's for sure. But it doesn't sound like this band is Better. It's not greater or less than anything, it's hard rock filler. It's made by people that probably tried to smoke scented markers to spark creativity. Don't smoke scented markers. That's almost as dumb as eating Tide Pods. And almost as dumb as associating yourself with spit for a living. Who does that? Spitheads. <laughs> over five minutes of holding nasally notes. I swear time stops with listening to the song Blackluster because you get stuck in this black hole that you can't get out of. The descending guitar notes used as a connector are awful and it doesn't sit well. The lower music in the verses while Scott wails is terrible. Click, click, 
Then you get some of the lyrics. If this is another song that's supposed to be about relationships, then wow, that's creepy. The guitar work does get better in the second half, but it's not enough to save this awful, dirty, whining song. How did grown men sit around and collectively come up with this? Five minutes of lyrics that get creepier as they go on, and then complain about how bad a relationship is. Some of the lines in Lackluster sound like they came from a horror film, and some of them come from a bad romantic comedy on the Hallmark Channel. It's as if a bunch of directed cable movies came together and Josie Scott just sang the script. Okay, Fault Line actually could have been something, but Saliva spit the bed. The vocals are a bit faded, but Fault Line has a good steady buildup with the riffs and really sells the post-grunge sound. It's not a great song, or even particularly good to be honest, but the idea is here, and it sounds like it belongs in the time frame, while setting a bass for the music. Fault Line is the type of song that should have opened the album. Steady riffs, good builds of volume before you go into those awful singles. It would have at least made things appear to be better. I still can't get over how bad of an opening track Superstar is. What were you thinking? With Fault Line, it's generic, and there are a hundred songs from that time frame that sound just like it, but it's much better than previous songs on every six seconds. Well, outside of the long-winded millennial whoop singing and bad mixing in Fault Line. However, it's a low bar, and this somehow is higher than other dirty spit I've had from the spit band I'm listening to. I've gotten comments in the past asking why I don't use profanity in my videos. Why do I need to, when I could just replace everything with spit, and it actually pertains to the band I'm talking about? And that's way more creative than anything on every six seconds. Remember how repetitive I said the song After Me was? Well, Beg is a bit like that, just with a few more lyrics written. It's obnoxious to hear Break On Down shouted over and over again like click click boom. Break, click, boom. The opening riffs of the song remind me of some random opening band at a middle of nowhere club, trying to look cool on stage and appear like they know what they're doing. This isn't even filler at this point. It's a desperate stretch to make it look like you know how to write more than 10 spitty songs. I bet you'd beg if you were serious, so break on down. I'm not even sure a human wrote this. It's like some bot produced lines of what bitter men in relationships would say, got it twisted, and then came up with this awful, awful song. When you read some of these, it just makes you scratch your head. I was actually thinking of acting some of the lyrics to this one out too with my girlfriend, but I, I don't want to put her through all that. <laughs> she puts up with so much as it is. Hollywood? Sounds like it comes from a totally different band. What am I listening to? Okay, the guitars sound like they're trying to rip off Peaches from Presidents of the United States of America. The whine and groan of going to Hollywood from Scott is so sad and pathetic. If I heard a musician whine like that he's going to Hollywood, I'd be concerned if that's really what he wants. Sweet mercy, it's like a kid complaining about going to the dentist. It is kind of poetic about bands like these from the early 2000s and even before then. Singer desperate to make it big and become famous, musicians wanting to become rock stars by any means necessary, so they move to Hollywood and do whatever they have to. Except, you know, they don't try to write more creative music or get better at their skills. But that's besides the point. Get famous by any means necessary. Then again, they did become famous and make a platinum selling album, so joke's on us. <laughs> Literally, joke's on us. 2001 was wild. The same year that had Tools Lateralis had Saliva's Every Six Seconds. What variety! Ugh. Take a ride in the dope ride. Right, left, take a ride. Spittiest dance step song ever. There were many more lyrics written for Dope Ride, as this is more on the nu metal side of things, and the guitar riffs and rhythm sound much stronger. Too bad the writing and vocals are so bad you can't enjoy it. And when I say there are more lyrics, well, it's more of the same words, just to a different rhythm. The subject matter isn't about relationships at all, it's just about how awesome these guys are, how big of a deal Josie Scott is. That's it. 
Come to think of it, that whole comment about most of the songs being about relationships doesn't hold as much weight now, because many tracks on every six seconds are just him bragging about... Well, he's bragging about how good he is, but he's not really doing anything. As a fun fact, this song was the theme for the Monster Truck Maximum Destruction at Monster Jam. I don't know why, but... Yeah, here it is. You know those Monster Jam shows are a lot of fun? Monster Truck fans get a bad rap. Then again, when they blast saliva at their biggest event, I guess they deserve the bad rap. Why is this track over six minutes long? Why can't it just end? There are good acoustic notes in the opening, but this song is the slowest drag to get through. This was Saliva's attempt to get serious and sing about not only missing a father who has passed on, but realizing things are really bad in their life while trying not to end up like said father. If the first three and a half minutes of the song and music were it and it cuts off, I'd think this song would be okay. My goodbyes would be fine. Josie Scott doesn't sound great, but you can tell he's giving something different. Then, after that bridge, it goes straight into butt rock with a ballad solo and wailing around again. And the track doesn't know when to stop. It's the end of the album. Just let it go already. Don't get me wrong, My Goodbyes is the most serious song on the album, and it at least makes more sense than some of the other badly written flexing and shouts, but it still doesn't work as a song you'd want to hear. This track is one of the better of the album, and it still is not good. And when this song and album finally finished, it hit me. There was nothing on here remotely good enough to warrant a platinum selling album. Every Six Seconds is not the worst album I've heard by a long shot, or the worst album on Regretting the Past, but Saliva should not have been such a big deal, and the album Every Six Seconds perfectly describes what the trail-off was of the post-grunge and new metal subgenres. There are tracks from this album that still get used in advertisements as a stinger, or even background music, and that really plays off the lazy nostalgia factor. Hearing Click Click Boom gets people to repeat it, but then they instantly forget about the song as soon as something remotely better comes along. If you're wondering if Saliva's still around, yes they are, they're actually still touring. Except Josie Scott is no longer part of the band. He got fed up and quit the spit. No joke, Josie Scott wanted to pursue a Christian music career and left the band. Since then, Saliva's continued to release music with only guitarist Dwayne Swinney as the last original member from the group. To be honest, some of the later music they released wasn't terrible by any means, and they're still touring as of 2019. My patrons chose this album, and I understand why now. Saliva did not deserve the fame and notoriety and constant airplay from terrible singles, terrible romance songs, bad flexing, and this. Let this burn into your subconscious. And that was a look at Saliva's Every Six Seconds. What album do you want to see on future Regretting the Past episodes? What do you think of Saliva? Leave a comment and let everyone know. Big thanks to my patrons and a special thanks to Brandon Baradfeld. You guys have all kept Rocked going and Patreon has been a big blessing because of that. You too could help support Rocked and have a say in future videos by checking out information on the YouTube card in the description below. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to get notified of upcoming videos. That also helps a ton to get the channel pushed by YouTube algorithms for searches. You can check out my concert photography on Instagram, and you can keep up to date with Rocked on Facebook and Twitter.